Thank you for joining us, everyone, for another episode of Live by Heart Today with your host, Don Spiegelberg and Wendy R. Wolf. Hello, and welcome to the Live by Heart Today show. I'm Don Spiegelberg, and this show is designed to help you navigate change, uncertainty, and the new world we found ourselves living in. We'll talk a little bit about science a little bit about how our body works, a little bit about intuition, and we'll talk a lot about transformation. Our theme today is belonging. And with me for today's Heart to Heart is my beautiful co-host, Wendy Wolf. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Dawn. Thanks so much. I'm so excited for today. Belonging is a big subject, and uh, Wendy and I spoke about it because in our last show, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy of need, and we got to the bottom level, which was foundation. The next level is uh, safety and the need for uh, feeling safe, which has to do with personal security, employment, uh, and resources in particular. And this week we're talking about belonging, which is the next level. It has to do with what groups we're a part of, our family, our relationships, and our sense of connection. I loved that we ended our last show talking about how our bodies can feel safe. And it was specifically about doing things to help the body and to serve the body specific needs that we have. For example, eating, sleeping, uh, going out for walks is a really big deal, drinking water, and most foundational, which can be done anytime and doesn't require any extra work or any extra effort for most of us, is breathing. So I'd also like to talk about and tie in breathing to our sense of belonging. So when we feel disconnected, when we feel lonely and separated, and so many of us are feeling that now, what do you notice happens to the breath? It becomes shallow it becomes short and it's really a sign that our nervous system has been shifted into the sympathetic state and we're not in parasympathetic. Mm. So basically if we attempt to take bigger breaths in, we can begin the process to shift into the parasympathetic state, which is rest, calm, digest, and safety. Are you breathing, Wendy? Yes, I was just noticing myself breathing a little more. And I'm so glad you made that um, distinction with the sympathetic and parasympathetic because, uh, I mean, I notice it all the time uh, in myself and working with other people, like we hit something that I can't be with or they can't Mm. be with. And the breathing like go shallow or it stops and it can stop for quite a long time. Right. And, and um, I notice quite quickly if someone I'm working, I make a joke. It's like, I haven't lost anyone yet. So let's keep breathing. You know, but, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, but, um, but it's just a natural thing that a lot of us do. And so it's, it's good to key in that it has meaning. And I always, up until now, for decades, I've been thinking in terms of I can't be with this reality. Um, Mm. But but you're framing it as you know it's a it's a danger. There's a fight, flight, freeze, something going on. That's that's really even more information. Yeah, it's a it's our natural response. So um, just for our watchers, they can read about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system on the internet, right? You just look it up, autonomic nervous system. It's super easy. And a lot of people know about it, right? Everybody knows when you're stressed, um, you, your body has particular uh, physiological responses. Um, but the thing is what people don't know is that that response, which is natural, is designed to protect us from threats. 
Yeah. And if you look it up on the internet, what's the most stressful thing in today's day and age? Well, without the pandemic, like just before the pandemic, the most stressful thing everybody was, said it was their boss. And how really? threatening is a boss, right? The question is, why would a boss be threatening? And I, I've got a brilliant answer. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think it's associated with their, oh. Go ahead, yeah. With our paycheck. Yes. Our career. Yes. Our survival. Yes. Also authority pictures, which are tied in there. You and know, it's just Yeah, all of yeah. that security. Yeah. And that reminds me, that would explain, um, right, the authority figures in our life and, and what people think about the authority that we have in our lives right now. Uh, they're determining a lot for us. They're determining whether we work or not, right? They're determining um, what happens for us moving forward. And so there's uncertainty. So we don't feel like we belong. We're feeling separate. We're feeling really strongly disconnected from all the things that we had set up as markers of our safety. Yes, and belonging and like, <laughs> etc. And I'm so excited about this topic because because belonging is so exciting. And I can't imagine that we're going to cover it today. I hope we do it again. Um, as well as I really want to do a show on the parasympathetic and sympathetic, um, because the stuff you have to say is brilliant. Um, but there's so much experience of disconnection and being lonely and um, really wanting to connect with groups of people and however, to be able to exercise together, play together, connect together, worship together, etc. Like I'm just hearing it a lot that there's, a, and also like 12 step program, all that stuff, all those connections that people have all the time are just not the same for them online. That's true. And one reason it doesn't feel the same that I would like to share is that our heart has its own electromagnetic field. And that electromagnetic magnetic field is about eight feet from our heart. So when we are in company with other people, and we're often within that eight feet distance, right? We are sharing energy from our hearts with each other. Mm -hmm. And the internet doesn't have that option. The internet doesn't allow us to experience the benefits of heart coherence that being in the same room in the same place offers us. So that's a really fascinating point that people are missing their connections. And here's a great reason why, because they're not in the electromagnetic field of people that they associate with very strongly and have um, uh, ties to, right? The ties that bind us. I want to talk briefly about... Don, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, just briefly, some of the, um, the ways in which we feel belonging, right? The, the, uh, what we participate in. So the first belonging ever that we experience is the belonging that we are associated with our mother. Because for 40 weeks, right, we're, we're tied in, plugged in, and we get every need met. That's amazing. So we start our own lives being directly connected, directly connected. And then we're part of the family. And then what's the next connection? Carolyn Mace talks about the connection that happens when you turn 8 to 15. And that connection is friendship. That's your best friend. That's when you get clicky, right? And then there's another connection when you become a teenager. And then, of course, there are connections when you leave home and some people choose to get married and they create a new belonging, one that wasn't there before. I'd like you to chat a little bit, Wendy, about belonging in these different um, groups that we experience. Well, um... From my perspective, all that you said, yes. And from my perspective, belonging is um, the same kind of experience as the safety and the 
getting our basic needs met. It's, it's that tribal experience that we had for millennia of mm-hmm. being part of the tribe. And if we're not part of the tribe, we're in trouble. And why? We're not, we're not going to survive. That's right. It's a matter of survival. So this mm-hmm. is in our physiology, right? To be a part of a tribe physiologically means that we're connected to the safety mechanisms of having protection, mm-hmm. of having shelter, of having food and resources. And Mm -hmm. people right now don't have their tribes. They don't have their connection. So their foundation is rocked and rocked way down to the roots of the foundation. Yeah. And fortunately, many of us are are sequestered with with some family or friends or roommates. A lot of us are. Um, It's really hard for people who are living alone. It's Mm. really hard. Mm. Um, because that's a whole different game. Um, you know, I, it's hard to be stuck in the house with someone too, mind you sometimes, but it's, it's really hard not to have somebody to brush up against and be in the same field as them. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about is that we can get those needs for connection in different ways. Um, for me, I like to do it. I like to connect with nature and you know, that's very available to me, but um, not everyone, but you know, if we're in cities and we don't have our own car or whatever, it can be hard. But for a lot of us, I mean, even we can go out and just commune with a tree or have our feet on the earth. It ma- like, it makes like a world of difference for me. So you're making a really good point. And for those people who can't connect with their idea of nature, the truth is nature is everywhere. And if you can't take a bath because water is nature, you could do something like run your hands underwater. You could, you know, I remember when my oldest son was three, he loved standing at the stool at the sink and running water and playing with funnels and cups, right? So fun. Anybody can play in nature in their own kitchen sink. I recommend Mm -hmm. they do it. If they can't get outside, (laughs) if a bath isn't available to you, run your water in the kitchen sink and just play in it and Mm -hmm. notice what it does. Notice how it feels on your hands. Yeah, get wet. Anybody can do that. Yeah, it helps. Um, And for me, honestly, it helps me to have have a little more wildness. Mm. Um, and I was able finally to do that after so long, we went out to the, to the national forest. It's like, uh, we have from us and I was able to go hiking and sit on the ground and, oh, nice. uh, go, you know, go in the stream, um, sw- I wasn't swimming, but I was like, I got to go under, got to go in the stream, which makes a world of difference for me. Right. Um, so everybody's different, but, uh, but finding ways in which we can experience that physical connection, even if it's not with another person, I find is very, uh, very helpful. You know, I've been um, gardening and it's spring. So I have to say there's been no better time for a pandemic because I got seeds in the ground. I was able to hoe my, you know, beds that have been overrun by weeds I've been out in my little back 40 trying to prune out the crazy holly trees that are everywhere. So yeah, everybody has their own little oh way of connecting with nature. So I'm glad to hear that you were able to get out. Yeah, it was a blessing. And, and another thing I wanted to talk about is connecting with our own bodies because a lot of times we're, um, it's, it's common in our culture to look for other people to, to give us skin, for other people to help take care of us and get our, get our touch needs met. But yeah. we can do that too. And I like to do that with swimming, which isn't very available right now, but I do like that. But, you know, like I, I've said in, in the show before, like taking a bath, um, using aromatherapy, putting on lotion, you know, re- like giving that TLC, that grooming, that sweetness, self-massage. Um, I like to roll around on balls on the floor, you know, like the yoga right. balls and 
uh, do yoga and stuff. And that's all very, it's very real for the body. That touch sense is so important along with the rest of the senses to stimulate. And that's not any, doesn't have to be anybody else's job. We don't that's need a, true. We don't need somebody else to do that. I have a question. Have you ever tried dry brushing? Yes. I like dry brushing. I love dry brushing. If any of our watchers have uh, never tried dry brushing, I highly recommend it. So you can get um, any kind of bath brush. You'll probably want it soft. My husband likes one that's really stiff. And if you don't have a brush, you can always just use a dry washcloth, right? So a dry washcloth. Uh, and what you do is you just brush your skin everywhere that you've got skin. You can dry brush it and it's invigorating. Mm -hmm. It stimulates your nervous system. And this is really amazing. It moves lymph through your body. So yes. that helps your immunity. Isn't that fabulous? Yes. And so I was taught to brush toward the heart, toward the heart. Right. Interestingly. That's um, the, that's the lymph movement. That's heart. the lymph movement. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it can feel really good. It does. That's the idea. Yeah. It's refreshing. Yeah. So over time I've worked, you know, th what's going, what's going on for a lot of people, this lonely and need and the need for people to be close is something that a lot of people are experiencing all, all, all the time. And now more of us are experiencing it. Mm -hmm. I particularly am thinking about um, people who are um, unpartnered. You know, mm -hmm. when I work with people who are unpartnered, we, we do, you know, we do the heart, the, the heart work of allowing ourselves to you know, be, being the love we want, allowing ourselves to experience the love that we want from out there, actually in here, and then we're full and it's all good, right? Except for the body needs aren't met still, right? And so it's a two-sided thing. It's dealing with the soul needs mm -hmm. on the inside and then dealing with the body needs on the outside so that we, you know, that we come full to our relationships instead of empty and needy. Right. So these so are all I, distinctions we do all the time, but it's especially needed now. Especially now. And I've heard it said like all the latest and greatest matchmakers, right? All the people who are trying to hook people up. I've heard them say, and, and really shift their ideals um, to mention that you should write down a list of what you want in your in the partner, right? Your best partner, and then you should live those things. You should be that, which right goes to some of the work that you do, which is being the love that you want. And that makes perfect sense because in our last show we talked about resonance, and that's right, the yeah. one violin. Um, string A vibrating and the other one also vibrating when you touch it. And that's the resonance. So if you be the love that you're seeking, then you're full of it. And that's how you can feel the belonging because what, when we resonate with what we want, then we begin to see in the world our blinders are taken off because we're no longer in the parasympathetic uh, nervous system. We've shifted to the parasympathetic and we can now see more opportunity and more options for finding the love that we want. And we're also feeling it already. So it just matches. It mirrors and matches and it's fabulous. Yeah. And if I have it, I'm full of it. I'm full of it. Um, uh, right. I, I like to say it's like I, I have the cake. Like I, I, I have all the cake I want, you know. And yeah, it's nice to get icing from out here, but I can do without it. And it's very useful, as, any time in a relationship, to be able to take it or leave it. It's very useful um, in the beginning because I'm not needy. Ah, uh, yeah. And then it's very helpful going through. Then I'm not needy, and I won't put up with what I it's not healthy to put up with and I won't write, I won't be it, it, needy doesn't help us get a relationship and it doesn't help us keep a healthy relationship. So when I'm full inside, I'm overflowing with those very things that people want. Who doesn't want the experience of oneness and closeness and belonging? Who doesn't want to feel validated and whole and enough, right? So everybody, like, I don't know anybody who doesn't want that. Um, 
and that's what love is. And then what you said, I love, it's a great, it's great coaching to be, if I want somebody who's really well read, well be reading. <laughs> I want somebody who's, you know, part of lots of communities and making a difference. Well, let's go. <laughs> yes, yes. And speaking of in the community and making a difference, now is a good time to take a pause and thank our sponsors, We Are Historically, for being a part of our show. Thank you, We Are Historically, for your conscious brand apparel. Hooray! Thank you for showing our sponsor, We Are Historically, your support. Wendy and I are talking about being full inside because who wants to hang out or be with someone who's needy, right? So when we are what we want to see, then we resonate and we're able to, I hate to say the word attract, but we're able to see and be with better the oneness, closeness, and belonging. Wendy, do you want to say a little, a little more about being full inside? I have to say, um, when you when you use the term the phrase full inside i really do feel full inside right i love being with you i love doing the show i love our sponsors i love our producer i'm just like more love and uh being full inside is just a much better place to be and it's a much better place to be when you're faced with having to be inside a pandemic, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I want, I, I'm ho looking forward to a whole show all about like being full inside. Mm. So that'll be really great. In the meanwhile, it's what I usually saying that in our soul, we can uh, notice that we already are love and we can allow from uh, earth and uh, earth and heaven to receive love and okay i have constant. to jump in i have to jump in when you say in our soul we can know we are love that we know we are love can you talk a little bit about like about that because some people are going to say okay i'm not sure where my soul is and i'm certainly not feeling love right now let's yeah. talk about that yeah I think I really want to go into it in, in another show. And um, from my perspective, it's a matter of uncovering that experience within ourselves. Mm. It, it's not something the television says is true. <laughs> it's not something we learn in first grade, right? I actually learned a lot of the opposite. I learned lonely and... Um, square peg and round hole and not belonging, <laughs> not right. belonging. Yeah. Right. That's what, what my experience was a lot um, for a lot of my life until I started going within and allowing myself to let uncover the, the connection that's already there that I was missing. Mm. And I, and I'll say one of the things that is, is in the way is what, what I call lonely pictures which is, well, it has to show up like this. It has to show up like, you know, a prince on a white horse, or it has to show up with somebody who looks like this, or somebody acts like that, or, you know, this wonderful community that does, you know, blah, 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 right? It has to look a certain way. It has to show up looking a certain way. And that's not it. It's here. Talk about that picture. Why do I have to have a picture of what it looks like? Well, because we're human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what part of my humanity? That's what I want to know. What part of my humanity needs me to have a picture of what it looks like? Well, um, I guess one would say our ego or our, or our mental patterns. Mm. We, ha we live in stories. Yeah, and why do we live in stories? Because those are the beliefs that we were given. Right. Those are the beliefs sure. that we take on from the original belongings that we experienced. So we can just talk briefly. When you were in your family, you had an agreement to play a particular role. Right. 
So this agreement, this role that you played was a story that you took on. It turned out I ended up being the sick one and the smart one. And um, my older brother was the funny one, right? And, and he and I, we made these agreements to play these particular parts in order to feel safe in our family. Mm -hmm. So this all goes right back to belonging and what allows us to feel like we belong and our foundation and how do we maintain our own safety, security, and our own belonging. Um, and, and the pictures that we create, the stories that we create are based in our past. Yeah. And sometimes we take on new ones, but we seem to be pretty set on having them. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's our um, subconscious programming, right? The yeah. program, um, the programming got a particular uh, hardware uh, or software. Yeah. And it works because look, we're still alive. And right. if that program worked and, and we survived, then it will continue running that program, believing that's right. the program we should, we should be running. Right. And we can, as you know, we can change those programs and enjoy such an amazing different life. Right. Like we can let go of that. I feel love only with a person who does this or looks like this or shows up like this. Right. I can just experience love all the time. Right. And, um, then, you know, then uh, it's very nice if that person comes along or whatever, but I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't need it. Um, that reminds me, uh, when I first moved to Seattle, there was a, there was a point in time when um, I was uncertain about my husband. We weren't married at that time, but I just felt like, uh, you know, I, he doesn't love me the way I want to be loved. And I'm talking about like a puppy dog meeting you at the door when you get home kind of yes. love, right? Yes. So I was just like, why don't I get that? And I yes. realized that's what I want. And, and I remember making a choice right then that I was going to love the way I wanted to feel love. And until he decided something different or told me or, you know, un until something changed, I was just going to love. And I can't tell you how that has brought us through our relationship because I just decided love is my value. Love is important to me and I'm going to do it no matter what. Amen. I do the same thing. I call my go my object of my affection. And I just like, I just love on him. Like not every minute, believe me, but I just love on him. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't That's matter beautiful. what he does. Yeah. So yeah. being the belonging that we want, choosing the belonging. Do you have any final I do things to say, you know, about belonging. I spent most of my life feeling like a square peg in a round hole. I, I never felt like I belonged. It was really painful. Mm. And I was always like complaining, like, why don't I fit? And why can't, why, you know, I was always complaining. And, um, I noticed in the, like the last 10 years complaining less and less and less. And then like lately, it's just like, I realized like wherever I go, whatever I do, I belong everybody there might not know it. Like it's gone right. from like, they get to decide if I belong and still, I don't feel like I belong. And now it's just like, I belong. You guys might not know it, but I do. And, um, that all comes from this allowing on the inside, this safety and trust and love and all the things we've been talking about the last couple of shows. It's just like, I get to set the, the, the whole game from within myself and yes. change everything. Beautiful. So you're saying having a strong foundation, just like Maslow's hierarchy of need, having a strong foundation will allow you to make it to his level three of belonging. Thank you so much for your time and your insight today, Wendy. Thank you. If this message spoke to you, please tell us what's on your heart and leave us a comment. And for more information about how you can live by heart, go to livebyhearttoday.com. From my heart to yours, and until tomorrow, live by heart today. And that concludes this portion of Live by Heart Today!
Thank you for watching. View more episodes on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Thank you, We Are Storically, for making this show possible.